Hello, I'm Rebecca Orozco and I teach history and anthropology here at Cochise College. In its early days, Cochise College had an active archaeological field school and most of the items that we're going to be looking at came from that, that field school and from generous donors who gave items to Cochise College. The display itself was funded by in a generous donation from the Pentec family and they allowed us to put some of these things on display. This area where we are, Cochise County, has been home to native peoples for ten, more than 10,000 years. Early hunters and gatherers hunted mam mammoths along the San Pedro River and in the surrounding area. But over time, climate changed and those hunter-gatherers were replaced eventually by farmers, people whose culture came north from Mexico. And many of the remains they left behind show those close ties of trade with Mexico. In this first panel, well, we have a trader here. He's carrying a backpack on his back, bringing trade goods up from Mexico. Um, the kinds of goods he brought, well, these come from a ranch just south of the college in Mexico. Uh, this figure here is a jaguar figure. The jaguar is, in Mexican mythology, is the sun. At night, he roams in the forest, and the day he climbs into the sky is the sun and this jaguar is representative of those stories coming from Mexico. Other kinds of items that were traded, well, shell. These shell necklaces um, are types of shell that are not found here in the region, traded probably in from the Gulf of Mexico and Gulf of California, and uh, pipes that represent ceremony, the kinds of stories that are part of the, Mexi the creation story for Mexican Native Americans are this, have relationships to the, to the stories here. The goods they brought would have been ceremonial in nature, often uh, special pottery, items like shell, and other trade items such as obsidian and turquoise went the other way into Mexico. And the farmers, the traders who came north brought agricultural products, which became the basis of the economy in the southwest. The farmers lived mostly in the foothills of the Chiricahua and the Dragoon Mountains and the other mountain ranges because there was ample water there for farming, but there were also wild plant foods as well. One of the major plants that was um, harvested by the Native Americans in this area was the agave. And our farmer here is harvesting agave by using a pole and an agave knife. These are the blades that would have been used for harvesting the agave. And then in the background, we have farmers growing corn, which was the main staple of the people who lived here. Corn processing tools, such as the manos and matates, other tools for clearing land, like these axes. Um, and once you have corn, you've got to store it and cook it. And so the development of local pottery styles takes off at that time. This particular pot here um, is a corrugated ware. Corrugated wares were mainly for cooking. By having them rough on the outside, they wouldn't slip if you were picking them up and they were hot. So this was a for cooking by the people who lived here. Other decorative wares would have been used for fancy occasions. The people um, whom we think were the ancestors of the Piman peoples who live in central Arizona today, lived by farming. They lived in small communities. Their houses were simple structures, some of them more or less frames covered with uh, mats. Uh, sometimes they would build a little bit more complex structure. And the women were doing the things that women in hunting and, or in farming societies do everywhere. Um, she's grinding corn on a matate, very like the one we have here. Uh, with her small child. She would have been the person who made the pottery, styles that were very distinctive here in southeastern Arizona. Polycomb pottery that's related to ceramic wares from northern Mexico but has its own distinctive red, black, and cream colored design. Um, she also would have woven the clothing that they wore using spindle whorls to wheel, weave, to uh, spin fat, the thread from native cotton plants. This is a spindle whorl. It would have been on a long st stick that would have spun to make the thread from the cotton. Um, pottery styles that are very distinctive for this area include these kinds of patterns. The pattern that is here we think represented perhaps a need for rain to support the farming communities. 
At about the time Spanish explorers arrived here into the southwest in the early 1500s, another group of people were also moving in. These were the hunting, gathering, raiding, trading people we know as the Chiricahua Apache. Um, the Chiricahua had a raiding and trading lifestyle that the Spaniards didn't agree very much with, and so they would attack the Chiricahua um, after, when they would come in for raids. This started a cycle of revenge and retribution that drove all of the farming peoples out of the area where we live now over to the Santa Cruz and to other rivers to the west. And the Chiricahua then were the main residents here until the arrival of people from the United States in the late 1800s. Um, we know them by Cochise, for whom the college is named, uh, who was the chief band leader here at the time of the arrival of the Americans. This drawing shows his son, Naiche, and Naiche's wife, Heotzine. The Chiricahua were here through a series of wars against the U.S. military from the 1860s until 1886, when they finally surrendered under the leadership of Geronimo, who is represented in this sculpture by a, an artist, Joaquin Torres. Um, Geronimo and his people went into exile, where they were held for 29 years before they finally joined the Mescalero Apaches in New Mexico. The weapons they used when they first arrived were the bow and arrow and spears, and many people who walk around the southwest here have found spear points like these. The small arrow points represent arrow for arrowheads for bow and arrow, and the larger points were on spears. It needed to be a heavier weight for the spear to work. The artifacts that we have here are a water jar. This water jar is plastered on the outside with pine pitch so that it can hold water. Ceramic doesn't work very well if you're a hunter-gatherer riding around on horseback. It breaks too easily, and so this is what they would use to carry water and other supplies. And a burden basket um, to carry other items. Uh, acted like a, a backpack. This strap would have gone across your forehead, and you could have carried things on your back. 